미국, 영국, 프랑스, 독일, 이탈리아, 캐나다, 일본 등 G7으로 불리는 주요국들은 모두 우주 전담 기구를 갖추고 있습니다. 이외에도 최근 5년 동안 무려 16개 나라에서 우주 전담 기구를 설치하며 우주 개발에 나섰는데요. 2018년 우주청을 설립한 호주는 가장 빠르게 뉴스페이스 시대에 적응하고 있는 국가 중 하나입니다. 특히 나사가 진행 중인 달 탐사 프로젝트 아르테미스 플랜에도 참여키로 하면서 이목을 끌었습니다. 말콤 데이비스 호주 전 전략정책연구소 선임 분석관을 만나 호주의 항공우주 분야 현주소와 전망을 들어봤습니다. Um, what you have seen um, emerge over the last few years is a, is a complete about face on government attitudes to space. Um, if you go back, you know, say 10 years ago uh, or even 20 years ago, there was an absence of interest on the part of government on Australia doing things in space Mm -hmm. uh, beyond just having the ground segment, i.e. having ground facilities to mm -hmm. manage satellites, uh, to track satellites, you know, uh, managing the data that came from satellites to the ground facilities and providing some trained personnel. Mm -hmm. um, there's a very famous Australian strategic analyst uh, who, re who passed away two years ago or so, uh, Desmond Ball, and he wrote this book, A Suitable Piece of Real Estate, uh, where he talks about the ground facilities that Australia provided to the US um, uh, space capabilities. And I think that's what our focus was some years back is was providing that suitable piece of real estate. Mm -hmm. um, things started changing really in about 2015 mm -hmm. um, when uh, the Australian government uh, did a uh, basically a, a submission or a survey of the emerging Australian space community. Uh, in part to get an assessment of where that was and attitudes towards questions like, you know, should we have a space agency and mm -hmm. should we have our own satellites? And the response was pretty overwhelming in the sense that, you know, the uh, vast majority of people were in favour of establishing a space agency and doing mm -hmm. a lot more in space than just providing a suitable piece of real estate. Mm -hmm. So um, what you saw was in uh, 2017, mm -hmm. Um, Adelaide had the International Astronautical Congress, uh, the IAC, and it was announced at the Congress, the opening day of the Congress was that we were going to establish a space agency. And I remember it well because I was there and the, the entire room just you know, sort of exploded in cheers sort of thing, because mm -hmm. uh, this is something that we've been wanting for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, 2018, the first spa the space agency is, is established. Mm -hmm. And um, we've gone from strength to strength since then in terms of our space sector. Our commercial space sector is rapidly growing mm -hmm. uh, across all aspects of the space um, environment. So, you know, we're building small satellites. Um, we've got companies building launch vehicles. We've got, got companies that are establishing launch sites. Mm -hmm. um, we've got a, a vibrant um, and growing ground segment that's not just government controlled, but also private sector now. So, you know, it really is a case now that Australia has one of the most vibrant uh, and new space sectors in the world mm -hmm. that's rapidly growing and it's growing probably at a rate far more than, for example, the UK uh, space sector mm -hmm. um, and by comparison, um, and it's growing across all aspects of, of the space endeavour. Um, and I think that this will continue. Uh, there's broad bipartisan government support for this, for the space agency and, and the commercial space sector because they recognise it's a fast growth area that is going to bring in a lot of money and a lot of jobs. And so mm -hmm. it will be politically so, uh, ridiculous to cut, shut it down. So that's where we're going in that sense. I would also add in that um, attitudes to space from the Department of Defence uh, and the national security community have changed fundamentally. Mm -hmm. uh, we used to be happy and contented to let the Americans provide everything for us. Now we want to do it ourselves. We want to develop the launch vehicles. We want to develop the satellites. And we want to be able to contribute far more than just providing a suitable piece of real estate. Mm -hmm. So 
that's where we are now in 2021 with the fast growing commercial space sector that is really in the lead. Mm -hmm. Space Agency has been established. It provides the policy direction, but they allow the commercial sector to lead in terms of technology development. So you, you don't have the Australian Space Agency like a mini NASA down under. It's not building rockets. That's the commercial side of things mm -hmm. that are doing that. Yeah, look, I think that the reason is because um, the commercial space area has really you know, taken off. Mm -hmm. uh, it's Space is no longer the sole domain of government. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's, it's no longer a case of NASA or the European Space Agency or uh, or various different other space agencies doing everything in space. Mm -hmm. You've got the commercial space sector now here in Australia and in South Korea. I know there's there's co companies that are starting up mm -hmm. um, that are doing very well there. Um, where you know the potential for commercial space to really achieve a lot more, a lot faster mm -hmm. than government-run space agencies yeah. at lower cost mm -hmm. is something that's really attractive, and so people see space now as, as a growth area as, mm -hmm. as an area where prosperity can be generated and that's the space 2.0 approach mm -hmm. in terms of let the commercial sector lead let private private industry and the new space actors like spacex and blue origin really take the lead on innovation and doing new things mm -hmm. the, the government space agencies are always going to be there doing stuff mm -hmm. but really the most innovative fast-paced developments are occurring in the commercial side and so I think that a lot of countries have woken up to this and, and realized the potential benefits of, of getting into this area with small satellites, with advanced launch capabilities, including reusable launch capabilities. Well, I think that Australia has firmly um, identified Space 2.0 as the best way to go. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Space Agency here has only got about 50 people in it. You compare that to NASA, which has, I think, 25,000 people. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a big organization. Um, the space agency here has identified that the really the best part is to provide the policy guidance mm -hmm. uh, for Australia um, to provide the policy guidance that stimulates the growth of the commercial space sector mm -hmm. and to do the international engagement side of things. But really, you know, it's the commercial sector that takes the lead in terms of developing the hardware, flying the missions, that sort of thing. And I think that that's the right path for a country like Australia to go. I think if we tried to replicate NASA down here and reinvent the wheel, we'd fail because um, firstly, we'd never be as agile or as transformational or as innovational as the commercial space sector. Mm -hmm. And secondly, it would be a taxpayer funded organization that would quickly lose political favor. So, you know, we've been very sensible and prudent and say, let's keep the space agency small, keep them tightly focused on their mission and their task. Mm -hmm. But really it's let the private sector lead and let them, you know, focus on making profit. Um, mm -hmm. And I think that's really where we have to go. And where are we going? Um, I think we are moving rapidly towards um, having our first launch capability in the next year or so, where we'll be launching Australian satellites from on Australian launch vehicles from Australian launch sites. Mm -hmm. And it will just go on from there, where we'll expand that. And we'll have the, a full comprehensive space capability for both commercial, civil, and defense and national security. Um, and, you know, this, this, well, the stars are the limit in the sense that, you know, we can, we can do an awful lot. Mm -hmm. We've already signed up uh, for the Artemis project, uh, a return to the moon going on to Mars, mm -hmm. um, where we're working with NASA and other partners uh, in that area. And I think that once the Biden administration establishes its space policy, um, will fit in with that as best we can. Um, and I think that's where the commercial sector can come in in South Korea. They can they can do great things with small satellites and re responsive launch mm -hmm. that guys should be really investing in. And I think you are. Uh, mm -hmm. I think you're achieving that. I know that South Korea is um, going to launch uh, its Blue Whale launch vehicle out of the, the southern launch site here in Australia mm -hmm. at Whaler's Way. Um, that's a small satellite launch vehicle that's going to launch out of South Australia. That's exactly the type of vehicle that you need to be able to have access to, uh, to launch small satellites. The challenge, of course, is launch sites for South Korea. Um, you know, sort of, you're way up there, a long way away from the equator. So getting satellites up into space is, is much more difficult than, mm -hmm. say, it is from northern Australia. So uh, that's something that I think that, you know, that South Korea is going to work on. 
I've certainly been having discussions with the South Korean embassy here about South Korea and Australia collaborating in space. And, uh, you know, this is an area that I think is ripe for, for development and discussion.